Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and in it we're looking at the first of four online quizzes for Chapter 11, which is on correlation and regression. The first question in this quiz is, if the dots on a scatter plot generally extend from the bottom left to the upper right of the diagram, but are very widely spread out, the researcher would report the correlation as A, strong and positive, B, weak and positive, C, strong and negative, or D, close to zero? In this case, the answer is B, weak and positive. And let's take a look at uh, how that works. This is a piece of a chart that showed up in the textbook and in the uh, uh, PowerPoint. And what you see is we go from a perfect positive correlation on the left where everything's on an exact straight line to the blob of a zero correlation in the middle to a perfect negative correlation. And the one with the big red circle around it is, in fact, a positive correlation. It's, it's generally uphill, and it's a correlation of 0.4, which, by social science standards, is not bad. It, it, it's a reasonable correlation, and with a reasonable sample size, it would be statistically significant. Anyhow, but it is weak, because you see it's not nearly as pronounced as the 0.8. Um, anyhow, that's a weak and positive correlation right there. Number two, the relationship in this scatter plot is A, nonlinear, B, direct, C, open ended, or D, linear. The answer here is nonlinear. Um, the standard version of correlation and regression that we're dealing with is designed for linear relationships, which means on a straight line. And obviously, we've got a curved line through here. And uh, you can call it curvilinear. There's or just nonlinear as a general thing, there are versions of correlation and regression that work with this. But the standard version that we're using, the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient and the uh, linear least squares bivariate regression, both don't. This is, we need linear data. This is nonlinear, it's got a big old curve in it. Um, and the problem is when you have a nonlinear data, if you're not paying attention, you can end up with the results and just be totally off base, it, or it could be sort of an uninterpretable, an uninterpretable mess. Uh, by the way, the idea here of direct, um, oh, here's my uh, chart here that shows actually Anscombe's quartet here. Um, I, actually, let me back up for one second. A direct relationship simply means a positive association. Low scores go with low scores, high scores go with high scores. Open-ended is just, um, you know, something I throw in. But let's take a look at this one. On the on the right side we have the uh, the chart that was on the other page. On the left side is the is what's called Anscombe's Quartet and it's something I talked about in the lecture but you see these are four sets of variables that actually have identical distributions. The X on all four of these has the exact same mean standard deviation. The Y has the exact same mean standard deviation. They have the same correlation and same regression coefficients but you see that they're very, very different from each other. It's only the top left one that fits the assumptions of the standard regression model. The top right one is has a very clean, pronounced curve, and the bottom two have issues with outliers and funky distribution. All right, number three, what is the minimum level of measurement to calculate a Pearson's R correlation coefficient? Choices are nominal, interval, ordinal, and ratio. The answer is interval. Um, the reason for that is because you need to be able to calculate means and work from those. Now, I haven't shown you all the formulas for cal uh, calculating the correlation coefficient because you don't need to do it, and we're dealing with it primarily at a conceptual level. But if you look at this thing here where we talk about, for instance, a re regression, you know, to get z-scores, you have to have means because you get the deviations from the means. And the correlation coefficient works off of z-scores also, and so you have to have an interval or a ratio level to do the standard version of correlation and regression, especially with Pearson's R. Number four, what is the non-directional null hypothesis for correlation? And your choices um, are R is greater than zero or rho, R is equal to one, same thing with rho, R is less than one or R is equal to zero. And um, anyhow, you got four different choices here. The correct choice in this case is D, that R, which is the correlation coefficient, is equal to zero. Now, let me just mention really fast, I talked about this before, 
R, a lowercase r, is actually the uh, symbol for a sample correlation coefficient. And the Greek letter rho, which looks a little bit like a p, in fact, if I go to the next page, you'll see it. We've got a rho there on the side that looks like a p. That actually is a, a lowercase Greek r. Um, that's the symbol for a uh, the correlation coefficient in the population. And uh, hypotheses are supposed to be written about population parameters. The reason I kept R, though, is in the departmental final at the end of the semester, when the question comes up about this, they use R. And so I want you to uh, be aware of that. Anyhow, non-directional, and so what you say is it starts at zero because correlations go from zero and they go up to positive one and down to negative one. And any deviation from zero in either direction would be taken as something that would be, uh, you would reject the null hypothesis. All right, number five. What is the predicted value of y when x equals 10 using this regression equation? And we have y is equal to 30 minus 1.2 times x. The choices are 18, 28.8, 10, or cannot be calculated without additional information. The choice here uh, that you want is 18, and here's how it works. Um, just take the equation, y is equal to 30 minus 1.2 times x, and, we, and the question gives us a value of x of 10, so we just plug that in for the x. So 1.2 times 10 is 12, that gets us to the third line, 30 minus 12, and gets us to 18. And that's it for the first quiz. Um, see you in a minute.